Smith. So go ahead, Gary. <clears throat> Trey, thanks for uh, thanks for being here with us. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Same here. Uh, one of last year, uh, the circumstances of you becoming a starter last year were uh, were a little bit uh, different. But I'm wondering, once that was established and you got the job, what did you prove to yourself last year, and what more do you feel like you need to uh, uh, improve on uh, in training camp? Yeah, I feel like uh, last year was definitely a good step for me, good stride. Uh, just getting, you know, really my first year uh, game action, consistent game action, and starting. Um, so I feel like it was good for me. I feel like definitely, uh, knowing the game, kind of feeling that game speed, um, tendencies, those kind of things I was able to take a step with. And now just, you know, stepping on top of that, adding more, you know, with my technique, being more consistent, um, being more consistent in film study. And now that I've kind of got a year under my belt. So those are the things that's kind of, um, what I'm working on this camp. And then what are your thoughts on the young guys uh, in the room, CJ, Josiah, and uh, Luke especially? Yeah, I think those guys are working hard, man. They're trying, you know, to apply the technique that coaches is teaching, and uh, they they listen. So that's that's a good thing. You know, sometimes you get rookies in that, you know, kind of want to come in and do their own thing from college or whatever, but they're taking the teaching and trying to apply it on the field as best as they can. So I like those guys for sure. Thank you, Trey. Uh -huh. Thanks, Gary. Let's go over to Mean, Mia, and then Jean. Hey, Trey, kind of building off of that, um, as a fellow former undrafted guy, what has been your message to Luke? And obviously, I know Chris was drafted, but in the late mm -hmm. seventh round. What has mm -hmm. been your message to those guys? Yeah, I just try to tell those guys, man, on and off the field, run, just run, 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 uh, full speed and all the drills. You know, um, look at the guys ahead of you to make sure you don't make the same mistake they do. Just trying to, you know, not really focus on being perfect, but high effort and just jumping in there whenever you can and getting your reps in so coach can uh, notice that you're giving that effort and you're trying to, you know, make a name for yourself. What did you think of those guys? Obviously, CJ out again today with um, being sick. What did you see uh, from Luke and some of those other guys as they stepped in? Yeah, they're stepping up. They're not... uh you know, waiting on anybody to tell them what to do when they notice that CJ is out again. They want to step up, get their reps in so, you know, he can get on tape and coach can teach them uh, right or wrong. So, Last one from me. Uh, another guy undrafted that you kind of took under your wing last year, Mr. Wingard. He really, at least, I mean, today, he really showed up special teams yeah. and then also on the defensive side. Can you just describe what you've seen from him from when he first got to Jacksonville? to where he was today yeah he's definitely embraced his role of uh you know being a special teams guy last year and then also having to step in there on game day a couple of times when we would have you know somebody may have to come out of the game so i feel like we we call him dewey i feel like dewey has done a a, a great job of, um you know just embracing his role and when his name is called you know he's stepping up he knows the defense he knows the special team stuff so he's a he's a good guy for sure Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he calling like he was like basically, you know, calling plays on special teams, right? For a couple yeah. times. Yeah, so, for sure. He knows all that. Is that crazy as an undrafted guy that now he's kind of leading the special teams? I mean, he's just locked in. Like I said, he understands, you know, his role and he stepped up to the plate. So he's ready to go for sure. Thanks, Mia. All right, let's go jump over to Gene. And then if anyone else has a question, go ahead and let me know now. Uh, hey, Trey. Uh, when you think about the new guys, both in your room, whether you're talking about, about Barku or Amari, and you think about the new guys on, in the receiver group, whether it's LaVisca or Colin or whomever, uh, who's the biggest talker in the group when you're on the field? Or, or are they all, you know, I'm, I'm sure some are maybe relatively quiet. Others may be a little bit more demonstrative. I was wondering if you could give us an early read on who might be more trash talking type guy yeah honestly man as far as the corners i can speak for the corners we're all kind of the young guys are kind of just they're listeners right now you know they're trying to soak in anything that you know the older guys could teach them can teach them coach can teach them so haven't really heard too much yap from the from the corner room and then receivers i feel like they're the same too i feel like everybody's just kind of locked in just trying to do their job not too much 
you know, talking. But as the year goes on and probably we get into games, it'll it'll come out game day. But right now at camp, I feel like everybody's just locked in. Uh, as a follow-up, I was going to ask you, has, has Barku reminded anybody in the room yet that he was the nation's interception leader last year? No, he hasn't. Okay. He hasn't, but, I mean, you could tell by his play, he, he's definitely a, a ball hawk. He definitely wants that ball. So, But, yeah, no, nah, he hasn't brought that up. Yeah. Thanks, Trey. No, no problem. Thanks, Gene. Let's go over to John Osher and then John Reed. Hey, Trey, people always uh, – talk in the NFL about guys making a year two jump. Would you say this is your year to do that? Didn't play much as a rookie, started last year. Expecting that from yourself, sort of a, a second year starting job. It kind of it kind of broke up a little bit. Were you asking is just this my second year kind of like to make that jump? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I definitely do um, feel that way. Like like I said earlier, I, I think having that first year under my belt was definitely a confidence booster. It was a, you know, I was able to fill out um, instead of like my rookie year, I got in maybe once or twice and then the last game of the season. But getting those consistent starts is just you kind of get the feel of, you know, game day and how the game speed is. So I definitely feel like um, understanding that and then coming in my third year, second year starting would be uh, definitely a step for me. And I would feel like I'd be a lot more comfortable knowing that, you know, I've been in these situations before. All right. Thanks, John. Let's go over to John Reed for the last question. How you doing, my man? Um, live practice day. Look like you guys on the defense was look like you were geared up for this today. Um, what, what, what it felt like out there to see some of your teammates make the plays that they did, Jernigan, um, Costin, you know, you guys did look like you had a real good effort today. Yeah, well, you, you know, whenever, uh, you know, practicing the pros, it's kind of different. A lot is tag off or, like, we call it whiz or you just run by them. So whenever, you know, we get the call from Coach that we can go live, of course, defensive guys get kind of excited about that. So they definitely, you know, getting the pass pop. I and, mean, you know, it's a little different uh, this year with no preseason games. So, we definitely want to try to take those opportunities where we can work on our tackling ops, work on, you know, actual contact to uh, kind of gear up for week one that we'll be going right into. So, And just to follow up to that, man, how, how do you guys gear you, like this, this defense when you don't have um, preseason games and you got a lot of young guys? As a player like yourself, how are you gearing yourself with it? I mean, I don't know how many preseason games you would have played in, but <laughs> how do you um, – how do you gear yourself up for these scrimmages and the practices? And you know they got to be similar, like a game-like situation to get you ready for the September 13th. Yeah, I think it's just putting guys in those like live situations of today or just any like hectic situation that we may have. Like we do situational uh, ball, two-minute drill, those kind of things that we will see in the game and just kind of throw guys out there so they can, you know, get as close to that game feel as we can. Thank you, man. Thanks, John. Looks like we have one more from Demetrius. <clears throat> hey, Trey. I hope you're doing well. Um, I just had a question about uh, Tim Walton. What, what kind of position coach is he, and how integral has he been to you know your success from last year and then going into this year? Yeah, uh, Walt has definitely done a great job as far as my development. Um, I've been able to get a personal relationship with Coach. Uh, I've seen him a couple of times, just one on one. We'll talk. We just have that good connection. Um, and then technique wise, one thing Walt does is he is he drills us like the rookies. He'll ask, we'll just come in and he'll have a pop quiz, and he want wants to answer right away because like the last question got asking about how we could kind of get ready for that game yeah. scenario with no preseason game, just kind of keeping us on our toes all the time. With technique, he's drilling us hard on those kind of things, the playbook. So, yeah, Walt's definitely going to grind us, but I feel like it uh, it all plans out um, at the end of the day. So, yeah, Walt has definitely been a huge influence on me as far as play and then also a personal relationship. I appreciate it. All right. Looks like I swear I'm going to say this the third time, but this is the last <laughs> okay. one. Mike Caracco, go ahead. <laughs> 
Hey, I couldn't get in before. I don't know what happened, so yeah. I apologize. No worries. Uh, anyway, uh, Trey, how aware are you of, of all the sanitation that's got to go on in that locker room, uh, on the equipment, on the practice field, um, you know, even with the footballs? Yeah, well, going through the locker room, really the whole facility, there's sanitation stations everywhere. Um, they have, I saw a new one where you can just push your foot on it like a trash can and uh, you can get sanitation on your hands. So they're trying to find many ways to keep the hand sanitized and then the equipment guys cleaning our shoulder pads, cleaning the helmets every time we come off the field. Um, and then the balls, you know, being on the field, a lot of guys wear gloves and stuff. So coming off the field, you definitely want to sanitize. They'll have stations coming back inside the facility. So they definitely are trying, you know, the best they can to get us sanitized, keep us sanitized all throughout the day. When you're um, putting your helmet on after they clean it or the shoulder pads, does it smell like sanitizer? Does it smell like hospital or is there no smell? Not really hospital, but you don't have that stink. though. It doesn't, you know, you can kind of smell that last practice stink on some of your pads sometimes, but they, they clean them, they clean them pretty thoroughly. So they just smell like fresh pair of pads. So then that probably should be something they continue to do even after the pandemic, I would guess you would prefer. Yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, D-Rock. And thanks, Trey. Appreciate your time.